welcome to the Public Privacy Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. That was a test. There we go. <laughs> Greetings. Welcome to the Public Privacy Podcast. I'm your co-host, Public. Privacy right here, you know. And this is our very first po- podcast. Long awaited. <laughs> long awaited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, long awaited. This is something that's been in the making for too long. But those days are over. Yeah. So, um, year. Thank you guys for tuning in as always. We appreciate and love you followers more than we love our distant family members. We really mean that. <laughs> the bottom of we mean hearts. that too. Really Y'all support us more. Yeah, support us more. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so we're here today, first podcast, and uh, going to hit it off. Let's let's talk about what's going on. This most pressing issue in the world, you know, this 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 girl I know named Corona. Corona. Yeah, Corona. Let's Corona. talk about her. What you want to talk the about? Silent killer, as our president <laughs> calls it. The visible enemy. Let's talk about the invisible enemy. <laughs> the yeah, invisible so, enemy. Uh, I just want to go out the rip saying, you know, people are kind of looking to use this as an excuse to get out of pocket. And I'm not really approving of that. I don't mind people all of a sudden want to become doomsday preppers, even though they're doing it all wrong. But, you know, this, this sudden attitude for victimhood and... um really just getting caught up in the news, it's kind of sickening. I don't know. Explain, though. Explain? What do you mean? I mean, basically everybody is just kind of, you know, day by day waiting for the next piece of news that, you know, what's going on? Are we going to be on lockdown further? You know, just just all of this. this I feel like in America, at least, I, I can't speak for other countries, but here in America, everybody's just kind of now just kind of being pushed into a force-fed mindset where we're kind of just waiting for, you know, the answers as opposed to making change happen in times like this where it's time to, you know, take a step back but still, you know, build in the background. Okay. Well, for me, I don't know, this corona shit, it's crazy. Um, Yeah. I'm just ready to get back to my normal life, man. Like, I just want this shit to be over with. And at first, I'm not going to lie, I didn't take it serious at first. Nah. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I took it serious, but I didn't think that it was that big of a deal because we dealt with SARS. We dealt with the swine flu. We dealt with Ebola. You know what I'm saying? We, we dealt <laughs> with that. Ebola! We dealt with that over the years. So I was just like, okay, this is something that's going to pass over, you know? And then all of a sudden, yeah, you know, we got everything being shut down, people losing their jobs. It's all right, man. It's all right. It's all good, man. It's, it's, all, all, good. Good. it's all good. Don't worry about that. We got, about that. We got towels. <laughs> but everybody losing their jobs and stuff like that. And every, I feel like the the well, U.S. As far as the U.S. concerned, I feel like we're just at a standstill right now. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like coronavirus is the real president right now. That's all I want to say. I just want to go on the record to say that. <laughs> is this is the real president. The real president right now. They're running the show. <laughs> Donald Trump is trying to ru- beat. Coronavirus in 2020. It's kind of sick. Do you think? Do you think there's any correlation between the coronavirus and the elections this year? I don't know, but there's always something going on during the election year. I'm not really a conspiracy theorist, but I'm a realist. So, if you notice, there's always some kind of hype or tragedy going on that the issue gets attached to the election, the national, you know, crisis, so to speak. Um, so I wouldn't say that it's a coincidence, but or well, I wouldn't say there's a correlation, but I will. I would say. It's a regular coincidence. So you take that however you <laughs> take that with a grain take of that with salt. A grain of salt. <laughs> a kosher salt. <laughs> gotta be kosher, baby. Gotta be kosher. Mm-hmm. So have you been quarantining and chilling? What's going on? Like, has your pussy rate gone down? Uh it, 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 it's been it's been maintaining. Gets no pussy doing the quarantine. No, no, no. It's been, it's been, um, it's been doing okay. You know, it could be better though. Like, define better. Um, I'm not really tell the truth. I'm not really meeting anybody right now, so I'm really dealing with the same. Damn. Oh well, I don't care. Whatever. I'm just dealing with the same, the same people I've been dealing with. You know, just um, getting to meet, getting to um, know people. You know, talk that good game. Talk that good game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Just Tell it get, like it is. <laughs> just getting to know fucking people. Um, you know, I haven't really been, you know, doing too much lately and not quarantine and chill, or whatever, but I just been at home bored as fuck, like, and like doing whatever the plug privacy stuff, you know, just coming up with ideas and everything like that for like moving forward until this um 
quarantine um, shit ends if it does, but I just been on, you know, you know, chilling. I ain't gonna say too much because I don't wanna make nobody mad. You know, feel me? It was a yes or no question, bro. We don't need your, you know, your biography. <laughs> I was looking for more for like the cliff notes. <laughs> too long, didn't read. <laughs> but uh, I've been okay. saving money though. I've been saving money. Yeah. No dates, no anything like that. You so know, you haven't been saying? tricking. Got it. <laughs> well, I'm not a trick, man. I'm, I'm also going to work and just say that my trick simp ass has taken full advantage of this quarantine life. Oh, have you? I am. Tell him. Tell him. I tell am him, laid tell him. the fuck up. And I'm not <laughs> mad about it. I'm not going to tell you who. <laughs> but otherwise, I feel like I'm dating myself. Uh, really, you know, our our main outing is just the grocery store, really. I feel like my life is just becoming serious. I'm going to the grocery store, come home. I fortunately do work in tech in my um, square life. Lucky you. And I get to work from home every day, even though I'm not essential at all. Um, don't tell my boss that. But, um, yeah, I've been kind of just hovering between, you know, families, houses, of course, you know. And grocery store, really, it's really become a highlight of my day. That's the only real sad part. I feel like I've become my grandfather in this quarantine. <laughs> what would you how you feel about um people um complaining about their kids? Like Oh yeah, yeah. There's actually this guy listening to Power 106. I mean, he was kind of like bullshitting with the sh- I think he was kind of nervous being on the radio and all, but he was like, Yeah, because Big Boy asked me, like, so like, yeah, man, how is it, you know, watching the kids and stuff in this quarantine life? And the dude was all like, uh, man, you know, the kids, man, it's bad, man. These kids. They don't want to play the games that we used to play when we was kids and stuff. So, you know, uh, I don't really know what to do, man. These kids are bored. They can't even go nowhere. So, I mean, I feel like that sentiment is kind of around for a lot of fucked up parents. You know, they don't really know what to do with their kids because they never really did anything. Exactly. That's the only thing. I mean, and it just, this, this, this is speaking as a parent. But, I mean, there's like a million things that you could do with your kids in the house. You know what I'm saying? As far as making stuff work, getting creative, whatever. So, I mean, it's really the, it's really the slacker parents that are complaining that don't have anything or nothing in their house for their kids to do. So it's the broke and the slackers that are really mad about the kids being at home. It's actually like a blessing in disguise, but... Explain that. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I get to spread, you know, actual, I feel like, real daytime and non, you know, um, after hours or after work time uh, with my kids, which isn't the norm. You know, most of the time I'm seeing them, you know, after work, weekends, whatever. You know, really sp- being able to spend quality time. So, I mean... Uh, I really put on my single father hat uh, during this quarantine, but I mean, I have no complaints about that. So anybody out there uh, making complaints about your children staying at home because LAUSD couldn't keep them around because they weren't cleaning to begin with, you're a deadbeat. That's all I want to tell you. Well, for me, um, I don't have any kids, so, uh, but my nephew has been around, though. He's two years old, and this little motherfucker, man, oh my God. I be wanting to fuck it. <laughs> uncle all, life. All, all, <laughs> I was born an uncle. <laughs> all he know is story. all he know is give me and, and <laughs> give, give me. me and give me. No, it's no thank you. You don't even understand. Thank you, nothing. I be trying to embed that in his goddamn head because he he a baby right now. He got like four siblings and shit. So this little motherfucker. Are babies man, too entitled? Yeah, that little motherfucker is entitled, man. Like I love him to death though. But I'm like little little mother, you little shit. He's just you know. Yeah, I think kids got it way too good out here nowadays. It was damn near slavery, you know, growing up, coming to the best. We had privileges, we had things, you know, we wasn't, you know, without, but, you know, we really had to ask for everything. Like, these motherfucking kids got phones. They can basically, you know, make the world their oyster, really. Us, we had to read encyclopedias, read the dictionary, hope that you get some computer time, <laughs> you know, to really figure shit out. But these, these, these little rotten motherfuckers, you know, they got it good. These uh Gen Zers and below. Yeah, I just think I I, I was the only thing I don't like though. I, I'm not a parent. I don't know what it's like anything, but at the same time, I feel like I would like love my children and stuff like that. But I know it's like a lot of people be complaining about their kids. Like they basically like school is like a daycare for for like a lot of parents. <laughs> you know, work like, is daycare for a lot of people too. People that would be like, just imagine. Did you hear about how the one president Andrew Yang he went to do like universal basic income? Oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah I heard about yeah, it. So just yeah. just imagine real quick if we didn't have to work. Like all you need to take care of you get enough money from the government whatever socialist society I don't give a fuck. It works that way. There's a lot of motherfuckers that wouldn't know what to do. Like they would be really bored. Like people who don't have skills to build or you know even go even find things. 
to go sell to people. Like a lot of people would be bored out of their minds if we didn't if we didn't have to work. Like yeah. people would be like bored shitless. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like now. <laughs> kind of like now. Yeah, like, well, yeah. I, I do miss the bar. You know, I'm a bar. Hell, fan. fucking yeah! I, I you know. Shout out I'm, to Bar Melody by LA. Everybody, shout out to Long Beach. Shout out to um, Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Hermosa Beach. You feel mm, me? We from this LA. Place that we go. You know what I'm saying? That's our our spot. You feel me? Couple of our watering holes. Don't come stalk us. There's no guarantee shout we'll ever to, be there. Shout out to Grits and Biscuits. You feel me? Shout oh, yeah. out to. Uh, Colors only, even though y'all kind of been on Colors some... fell off. Let's tell the truth. Yeah, Colors yeah, yeah, fell off. Yeah, yeah, Even though Back... y'all been on some bullshit lately. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Y'all been on we, some bougie we shit. We still fuck with the Grits and Biscuits, you know, that yeah, older, I had fun at Grits and crowd. Biscuits. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, Grits and Biscuits. Grits and Biscuits always do me well. I can't lie mm-hmm. about that. They always do me well. Mwah. You always leave with a few biscuits, huh? <laughs> hey, <laughs> butter biscuits. Butter biscuits, huh? <laughs> extra honey, extra mm. honey, baby, extra that's, honey. That's right, that's right. Sorry for the people that. Um... Speaking of biscuits, man, Chick Fil A's been letting me down, man, with these, uh, this, this quarantine menu, man. They got like three, like about five, six things. You can't even get like the full menu no more. I don't understand. Like, what's the point of reducing the? F- I mean, maybe they had unsanitary food to begin with. They had to get rid of. Now they only have this. I don't know. Conspiracy theory, be conspiracy theory. Maybe now it's only the really clean menu items, but they have to take some shit away. I'm really hot about that. Like what? What they take away though? Like the chicken wraps and the salads and other stuff. All you can get is like the biscuits, the three piece uh, nuggets. You can't even get the tenders right now. They're not even getting the tenders. Can I get the sandwich you though? Get the, you can get the spicy chicken sandwich and get the original chicken sandwich. We got some people watching. Hey, people. I don't know. So we just this not where. So we just bring. Just fuck it. Fuck it. Too late to duck it. Because I want to see who... I want to give a shout-out. I can't see, though. Sorry, I can't see how we kind of far back, but whoever's tuning in, good looking up. We love you. Yeah. Talk, talk about our Instagram watches. We're Depending on who you are, I mean, uh, right never now. mind. We stop. Yeah. <laughs> Quarantine life, you know, it's here for now. Um, Just to wrap that whole... No, but, but, but... What? Let's stay on the quarantine for a second. Um, We got to talk about the quarantine deals. They got deals out here in these streets, man. Oh, yeah. They got the Korean barbecue at Jen. $10. What you can go down there and do, privacy? Dude, they, at Jen, y'all, they got motherfucking... I seen it today on Instagram. They got $10 platters because, you know, people got to make their money. People not going to lose... They're they giving away food right now. I got a couple places, but this is the number one place. Jen's bar- Korean barbecue. They got two um two meats um two meats and three sides with a steam of bowl of, with a with a bowl of steam of rice. But um, what ten ninety nine I think carry out only, but I think they I believe they cook it for you if I'm not mistaken, but I mean that's still a fucking deal. Like you get two meats, you get three sides. I I don't fuck with the size though, and the, the the steam rice, whatever I guess. But yeah, I'm fucking with that. And uh, and another one was um Chuck E Cheese. Now they got ten wings, <laughs> a large pizza, for ten ninety nine carry out. You can't beat that, baby. You can't beat that. That's crazy. Like, you never imagine, like, all these places that you would never get takeout from. Like, and I always said, you have, have to do to take out. They, they have yeah. to make some type. They can't just shut completely down. Yeah, they want to bleed slowly, you know? Yeah, I like that word. <laughs> bleed slowly. <laughs> I'm not just dying right here. I'm going <laughs> to bleed slowly. I'm going to die over a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unnaturally. <laughs> you got to. I mean, you got to. I mean, yeah. what, what can you say? And for all you motherfuckers that's... Um, Going out, um, taking those risque, um, you know, um, parties and stuff like that, or like. What do you mean by risque parties? Talk about those parties. What parties? What kind of parties you talking about? What kind of parties you go hey, to? Hey, like I said, Clarine and Chill is real. But Are you it, talking about the the people that know how to sit their ass at home and no, I'm talking about that, and shit. That's still fucking around. Oh, you mean like the sex parties? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. No you swingers fucker. talking about you swingers at home? <laughs> yeah, get off the swing. You, you nasty motherfuckers mm-hmm. <laughs> out here still living your life and um having hand sanitizer sex out here. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Talking to you. You're the scum of the earth. Mm-hmm. The worst. Okay. I guess that includes me. Mm-hmm. Have you been to a swinger party? No, no, no. I thought. Well, me and my ex was gonna go one day. Um. It was like what, five, six years ago. I was like 24, 25. We was gonna fucking do that shit, um, but it never, it never um, panned out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, insecurity and stuff like that. You know, is and that's another thing is with this um, quarantine situation. Have you even noticed any posts or like um, memes about any 
insecurities or like people getting like fed up with their um with their partners or whatever? No, but well, I I, I did see a post. It was some kind of meme. It was like divorce. Uh, lawyers, they just waiting, you know, for for once this quarantine is over, they you know they shit about to go through the roof. What? Well, folks gonna get sick and tired of their wives, and wives gonna get tired of their husbands too. They gonna miss their work boyfriends and their work husbands. Oops, did I say that? <laughs> Oops, I did it again. Yeah. That's that's um that's crazy though. Yeah, but... see, the the real sufferers are all the people with work wives and work husbands. Those are motherfuckers that's mad. They they can't say they boo every oh, day. Oh, that's what I'm gonna talk about. Yeah. Hey, you strippers, you prostitutes. Oh, how you... was work? <laughs> <laughs> how was work, bitch? How much did you make today? How, how how much is work? Shout out to all those sex workers that, shout don't, out to you, that, that don't pay taxes. No, shout out to the sex workers that don't think they're sex workers, but they really are. Yeah, no, yeah. they no they they know they know they're sex workers. You're a fucking prostitute. But how was work for you? Can, can you please tell me? I'm curious. How is work going for you with all this coronavirus? Are you going to risk your life by slaying your, p- no, your fucking cunt hole everywhere, your vagina, Whoa. Your, 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 your pussy snatch? S- sounds like there's a bit of a grudge. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, a, no. Yeah. Do you have a personal <laughs> debt to collect? <laughs> this guy. Somebody. This guy, I swear. Yeah. I just want to know, though. I just want to know. Yeah. Shout out to all the sex workers. No, I mean, yeah. We went to the slut walk. See, we can speak yeah, on these things. I can say these disparaging check, things. Check the motherfucking record. We, yeah. we did the check work. Check our resume. We did the work. Check our resume. We did the work. We've been to the slut walk. That no, was a great no, day. No, 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 no. On a serious note. Fam. Yeah. How you think the sex, worker, sex workers, sex workers, sex workers mm-hmm. are doing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're probably financially depressed. Mm-hmm. You know, they probably can only order one wing stop instead of two wing stop meals. Do you think motherfuckers out here are still um, buying pussy with this coronavirus? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, OnlyFans and all these... The, these e-girls are going up. These cam girls, these e-girls, these, you know, these sub-dom people. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, the cash app go crazy. They make the cash app go crazy. Oh, so do you think that they're making more money on the internet or, or in person? Oh, they're definitely... They're cleaning up online. Like they, Online? They're killing it. They're killing it. It's nothing... It, the the online game does it's it scales and scales higher. It's like ten to one hundred times X killing what you know you owe what some of your mamas is doing, you know, doing flatbacks. You know, you can do way more online than you can doing a regular old flatbacks like your mama used to do back in the day with Mr. W- Mr. Walker who come in and out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember her little friend that kept the lights on, that got your school pictures, cash paid the day of? picture day yeah you can take your mama's back for that <laughs> so do you um how much money you think these motherfuckers are losing they're losing uh the like the like the foot soldiers yeah how much you think they're oh losing? yeah all oh, the pimps are mad the pimps are mad because during quarantine life i mean i don't know can 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 somebody you know go out there and, and check on them hoes if you know <laughs> throw them a bone but as far as i'm as far as i've seen because i live you know through areas, you know, where the traction shit is at near South Central or whatever. Fig right now is doing bad right now. Yeah, they now. doing bad, man. Fig is doing bad. They writing new bitches up. Ain't no hall pass for selling pussy in the quarantine. But it, I, they still be out there, though. Like, they still be out there. I be seeing them, like, yeah. when I drive They'll down try. Shit, well, you know, I be seeing When them. I was driving out today, like I was telling you earlier today, they got signs from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. You can't turn down those streets where, you know, the hot spots, where, you know, the, the like the main person. And it be the certain track. streets, like. It be certain streets. Like. 988th and Fig. 104th. 104th and Fig. Like, them the streets where the prostitutes be. Like, it's certain <laughs> streets where really 88th and Fig. Like, it's like, oh, okay. They're, they know. Mm-hmm. They know. But yeah, I mean, the online game in general is already killing. That's why a lot of these new age hoes, they don't even hit the streets. They just go straight to, you know, premium Snapchat, OnlyFans, all that shit. They, they killing um, the streets with that, uh, you know, with... All these premium and babe, you know, these Instagram honeys, you know. So what's your take on um, these boyfriend, girlfriend pimps? Well, I think, you know, they got the game twisted. The roles have reversed, basically. Uh, a boyfriend, girlfriend pimp, you know, that's a nigga that's acting apart, but not close to walking the talk that he's out here spitting. 
Um, and it's ugly. You know what I'm saying? It's real ugly. It's messy. Um, you got, you know, so it's weak, so called peas out here, you know, taking orders from a bitch, you know, tricks is hollering Matt, but they ain't fucking making shit. Man. But tell tell them, tell these niggas, tell the people what these niggas are doing though. I don't think people understand like the pimp, because we we 30 years old now. When we grew up, pimping was real. Like it was no you chilling with the homies. It was no you smoking blunts with the homies. Bitch, if you with the homies, you sitting your ass in the corner. It was it was like these niggas sleeping. In, these these niggas is having getting these bitches pregnant. They bro. handcuffing hoes out here and they pin them on the track. Basically, yeah. That's why it's called boyfriend girlfriend. These niggas having babies with these. These bitches. niggas is pimping out bitches they actually love though. Like, yeah, not in a business pimp you know archetypal way like. No, like, I really love this bitch, but, you know, this the best thing smoking because I'm not a producer type of nigga. So I'm going to just put you out here <laughs> and I'll watch the kids or I'll watch your kids. Yeah, I'll watch your kids while you go um do your shit on whatever street. Yeah, a lot of and these pimps is really stepdaddies. Not even, not even stepdaddies. These motherfuckers is roommates. Stepping these roommates. These roommates, yeah. my nigga. Like, Their mama's a little friend. These motherfuckers is not... The game has changed. Like, I'm sorry if you a pimp to me. Like, you just you you a sucker. You ain't doing it right. Cause all of the the pimps that I know that I grew up on, it was different. That's all I'm gonna say. And that's yeah. why a lot of these women are. That's why a lot of these hoes is, um out here renegading and shit. And that's why we out here promoting something else. You know, <laughs> what are we promoting? Recording and videography. <laughs> 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 what about that stream life, baby? We need to make a Twitch. We need to make a Twitch. A Twitch. We need to be on every platform, man. We need to get a. I mean, yeah. we already, you know, killing Instagram right now. We doing real good on Instagram, but you know, for um, like when we're out um, filming, we need to have like a Twitch, like have like have like another person that can film, so, so we. Can, that's like our own little live chat room, like just like just like with Instagram Live or some shit. But yeah, we're gonna talk about that offline, offline. But anyways, um, back to this quarantine life. Um, like I said, I'm doing this IT remote tech life. You know, I'm a, one of those black I'm, anomalies. Don't tell them everything, though. I ain't gonna tell them everything. I'm just gonna tell, tell them how everything. good life can be. You know, if if you follow, you know, the footprint God laid before you. He's the money maker, y'all. I'm not the money. He's maker. the money. Maker. I'm the lazy nigger at work. Don't, <laughs> the, 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 don't let LinkedIn fool you. I'm the lazy nigger at work. I don't deserve half the shit that I've earned. But every he two lied. weeks. He deserves everything. Every he two he weeks. He deserves every motherfucking thing When that direct deposit hit, he hey lied. there. When that he direct lied. deposit he every two weeks. He worked hard for his shit. I spent it like he I grew it and harvested it He tried to downplay it like he should, though. He tried to downplay it. But yeah. Let's I'm, not talk about I'm making the most of this quarantine life. You know, I did some laundry before I came here. I'm getting things done during the week, man. Because... I don't I like. Haven't. I don't like I've using my slacking. weekends to run errands. Like when you got a day job, when you're a wage slave, like most of us are. Um, basically, if you answer to a clock and somebody else, and your schedule is basically your work schedule de- determines if you can eat or not for the next couple of weeks or whatever. Just moving forward, and your main way of making money. Um, this quarantine life and, you know, sitting at home has been a blessing. You know, I'm able to get shit done. I hate fucking doing shit on the weekend. I mean, on the weekends, yeah. I love enjoying my weekends. That's my biggest complaint about having a job. I don't give a fuck about getting up, you know, getting out the mud, whatever, going to work. I'll get at five, six, three in the morning, two in the morning. So it's all, it's all about... It don't matter. It's about lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? The quarantine has gave me the best lifestyle. Quarantine life has gave me the best lifestyle. You know, because so, I, I, I get to actually enjoy being an adult. Being an adult was weak. I mean, it's weak as fuck because everything's closed, but... As far as enjoying my own, because, you know, I'm the type of nigga that got my shit together. You know, <laughs> I, I can actually stay at home, you know, make a full breakfast, you know, uh-huh. spend time with my kids, uh-huh. relax, you know, during the week, set up activities, do shit, barbecue, you know what I'm saying? And I don't got to wait till Saturday to do that shit. On yeah, Saturday, we love barbecue. I can sleep. Weekends is made for sleeping. Yeah. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? We, sleeping and partying. That's how I, you know, I'd rather go out on a Monday or a Tuesday, and I can do that now. But going out, like I said, it's just going to Ralph's, you know? That's the club right now. Ralph's Superior. How you feel about these Dollar Tree? How you feel about these fucking lines at these the grocery stores, bro? Oh, the grocery store life? Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the Lysol is the only real downside of it. I mean, at first it was. Does kind it of annoy you though that you have to wait in the fucking line? Yeah, that's there, so. stupid. Like every time I drove by the smart I find out by my house, I always see a line. I'm like, okay, we've been on the shipping going on forever. There's not a food storage, but I don't understand what's up with the lines. I mean, 
the lines make sense from a social distancing perspective. I guess that's uh-huh. the reason because they're not doing it because there's a shortage of food. They're doing it because they want to limit the. They want to cram people. people up. Yeah, they want less fish in the fishbowl. But you're cramming people up in a line though. Mm. <laughs> no, well, no. At the lines, they have you know six feet. It's now when I went to Winkos, well, shout out to Winkos. I love Winkos, but I'm gonna say this: problem. you have Winkos. I'm no that. Exactly. I'm a, no Winkos. I Ralph's, love Winkos. Ralph's has lines. You have six feet distance. In most stores, they have like you know separators or what I'm saying about. But to me, I'm not gonna lie. I, I brought this up to say this: I actually like the um having lines outside of grocery stores. I think it's actually better. Cause like when I went to when I when I went to Winko, the grocery store looks like a motherfucking nightclub. That's all I'm no, saying. No, not the that line. shit looks stupid as fuck. Well, like I said, I was at Winko's and it was only like twenty people in line. I don't know what, what you probably went to like a, a hood store somewhere. You no. probably was on Western and fucking um Western and Slauson or something like that. No, I had food for less one of those. No, but I'm in, I was in um Long, I was in one in Paramount. I think it's Paramount or Long Beach. The one There's in lines everywhere. It was only two people in line. Basically, what I'm getting at, I waited five minutes in line and basically. I got like every hour to myself. I kind of like that. Like it's kind of just like a just a go and I just. So you're just a selfish want. person. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah, basically, just yeah. say that. Well, I mean, don't use coronavirus for no, 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 to, to no, push no, your agenda. No, 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 no. Stop trying to well, use what, coronavirus no, 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 to push your own no, no, agenda. No, 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 no. What's the difference between me standing in line outside and me standing in line in the lines waiting to pay for my food? What's the difference? Well, there's still there's lines. No there's still lines when you check out, so it doesn't matter. It's just it was another no line. line when I checked it's out. two lines in the line. You standing in two lines. It was no line when I checked out. I well, I checked. Well, I waited that, in line outside. That's not the average grocery store experience during quarantine. That's why I said shout out to Winkos. Okay, shout out to them. Shout out to Winkos. Because when I went there, I waited. I, I was mad. It was like 20 people ahead of me. Which, I'm like, man, I don't want to wait in line. But it only took me five minutes to get in. Then when I got in, I got everything I wanted. I was done in like, I was done like in is, 15 minutes. Is that the only store that you're going to consistently? Yes. That's what, that's, well, that's, that's well what you're you, smart for that. That's what you're supposed to do. The, the trick is Winko's to find is a store. Winko's is where it's at. Hold on. Let me say this. During quarantine life, find the store that works for you. Learn their patterns. Learn the delivery times. And you base your life around that. And you can't lose this way. It, it can't go tits up. I love tits down too. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got my fr- refrigerator full, and I have no complaints. Shout out to anybody. Yeah, my deep freezer full. You know what I'm saying? They had five dollars. They're looking for whatever steaks. Thing. They had. There's only one bro. food I was looking for. It's one particular item I found. I went to Smart and Final. The Smart and Final in Torrance got a gang of shit. I went to the one on uh, right by the Delamar Mall. You know, but I cleaned up in there. I, I, what, I, you, what you? What you? What you? What you get? Man, I got. Uh, what did I get? I got housewares. Thank you. I got beans. I fuck with those black beans. Those Goya beans. Those are fire. The ones with the blue cans that be on like the uh, that be on the uh, Latin American and Hispanic food out. I fuck with those. I put those in like ten percent of my dishes. You know, you know, Chef Pierre. But um, I got some. I got some. I got some. I only got. I only got a little. What bit else did there. I get up there? I got my meats and yeah. stuff. I got stuff for my kids. I got snacks. Variety packs, all that type of stuff. I always clean the best smart and fine. What type, what type of snacks you get for your children? Well, I'm not out here. I'm not one of them Kool-Aid jam parents like a lot of these. For my uh, niece and nephew, what yeah, you get? They eating good out here, you know. Uh, you know, baby carrots, you know. Ah, that's for Apollo. Fruit roll-ups. Or should um, I say names? I shouldn't probably say names. Yeah, probably should have dropped government names, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Well, you know. But uh, it's all good. Um, you know, regular shit. Food, French fries. Um, I'm I'm not big on sugar and pop uh, pop tarts. I stopped doing all that shit a long time ago. Good. I'm I'm trying to I'm I'm not a vegan or trying to push that holistic shit because you know, um, I'm just as greedy as anybody else. But um, I purposely don't go for things like real sugary cereals, stuff like that, pop tarts and all that. I I, I kind of left that alone, and now, um, I kind of you know just guide them based off my diet and stuff. But as far as snacks go. Uh, cheese it's all that you know all that good stuff, kids. Like, but yeah, not yeah. the the real just Oreo cookies and Nah, that's that's garbage. That's garbage. I don't even, I don't eat that shit. Slime filled Twinkies and all that new shit these fucking kids be eating. But I don't know, but yeah, I'm um I'm I make a conscious effort to not you know uh, give my kids you know a bunch of shit's gonna make them fat and um, unmotivated. I plan to change my diet when I hit like I guess. 30 in a month. But yeah, because like, these 211s twice a day is not going to work out, you know. Mm-mm, you see this? I'm a blue moon guy myself right here. Shout out to the people over there, too, at home. Hey. But I do... I drink a lot of water, though. I drink, like... I drink, like, half a gallon of water a day. You mm-hmm. know, I always try it. And I, I, I cut down on fried foods, but I do crave um, fried chicken every once in a while. I, I eat fried chicken, like, once a week. I'm not going to lie. 
I love fucking fried chicken, but I, I really cut down. But I really bake and I grill. And you know that's yeah. I, I grill a lot of my shit, and grilling is healthy. But I do need to cut down on my red meat. Healthy. Like I, I do. I love steak. I, I fucking love steak. red meat gang. Yeah, yeah, I fucking love steak. Like I just, I can't live without it right now. Like, but the older I steak. get. I did. I, I did. I, I, steak. I, yeah, yeah, I'm like, a, I'm like, I'm like pookie a crackhead. He's pookie for steak. I'm like, yeah, I'm like pookie with steak. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. You know, this man, you know, he's not like. <laughs> yeah, I'm like pookie when it comes to pookie, steak. Pookie by my wagyu. <laughs> <laughs> if I go a week without steak, I'm fucking having his shakes. But <laughs> I got <the> steaks. <laughs> but lately though, like, I, like I did drop ground beef. Only eat ground beef when it's um. When it's in a burger, because I don't like turkey burgers. Ain't to me that. No, man, you don't know how to make them. I don't like turkey burgers, but I do eat. I eat ground turkey um, Mm -hmm. tacos, ground turkey fucking spaghetti. The only thing I I just don't like ground beef. To me, ground beef is without besides um, burgers. Ground beef is fucking gross, bro. That shit is nasty. Like I haven't. You taste all that fat. That's why. Yeah, that shit is fucking. gross, No matter if it's ninety percent lean, ninety three, you taste. You always taste the fat. That shit is fucking gross. If it ain't on a burger, like 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 a meatloaf, I will fucking. I don't know what the fuck is ground beef. Where did they even get that from? Is it like a ground up steak or something? It's ground chuck. Chuck. It's ground chuck, bro. Man, this shit is fucking. Shout out to all the butchers, man. Yeah, shout out to my butchers, though. You feel me? (laughs) I like bison, though. You ever try bison? No. I had Buffalo at Catalina Island. I fuck with Buffalo. I fuck with the Buffalo burger. Shout out to my watch. Trying to make yeah, a guest appearance. That, Shout out to that. Casio. Hey, flex, my mama flex, got me this show watch. The watch. Show me the watch. Oh, yeah, you know the watch. You know how many carats? It's is not that? a Rolex, but you know I still bust down. Is that 10K, 14? How many Ks? Oh no, it's no Ks. You know what I'm saying? It's that. It's that. Uh, it's that wrap around, and it's about eight o'clock. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. It's dip. And you ain't got your pinky ring on you. Today, I ain't got huh? my pinky ring on today. I don't want to hit him in the quarantine. You know, I left my. I got the fourteen on me though. Okay. Fourteen. All right. Yeah. Take that to the pawn shop. We don't care about you. <laughs> we do not care. Unless you, unless you got my stimulus check, we do not care. <laughs> let's oh talk about, this, let's yeah, talk about that. Let's hey, talk about that. Where is this money going to fucking come? They keep talking about it. I don't see no damn direct deposit. Well, last I heard, uh, you're supposed to supposedly, they're going to initiate the direct deposit starting April 9th. But... All you people that like to move around and you scammers who don't even work. And we do mean you people. Probably not going to to begin with. But everybody, you know, with, with a lot of address changes in a year, for whatever reason, we're not going to judge. You might have a trouble getting that check. But all you direct deposit people and hardworking citizens who pay Uncle Sam, you know, his um, commission every year, uh, look out for that direct deposit coming soon. I thought I wasn't going to get mine at first, uh, but I'm happy to find out that I am. I thought I made a little bit too much, but I made just enough. And did the, you? And the dependent helps. You know. How was that? I'm not going to speak too much on you know that, but how did you pull that one off? Well, you know that's as good accounting. Shout out to TurboTax. You know, I'm not. Never mind. I'm not going to get you in trouble with the feds. But well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your take on the $1,200 stimulus check, though? Like, what's your your honest opinion? Well, it's on definitely it? not enough. Uh, that might you know get some people by in the rural South or maybe Texas. I don't know uh-huh. what things are going for these days outside of Los Angeles or New York. But um, I feel like it's a noble effort. But you know, the 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 big companies are are really getting the the brunt, you know, and the meat. You know, we're getting the crust of the bread, you know, and they're getting all the filling. Um, all this, you know, regular taxpayers. But I feel like it's like a slap in the face. It would have been better just dropping forty k in everybody's uh, checking account, you know, for whatever trillion or whatever figure. Like they could have just gave everybody ten stacks. Um, that would have got a lot of people going. Trust me, even right now, 10 stacks can help a lot of motherfuckers get going or get caught up and um, feel good regardless. 10K never hurts. Where is this money coming from? Oh, this money is coming from debt because the, the Federal Reserve, they like to to do something called, I'm not going to get too technical, but something called quantitative easing where they basically can make money appear out of thin air and you know deflate the value of existing money. So uh, the head of the Federal Reserve, this guy named Jay Powell, he has his money printer, and he keeps turning it, and he prints trillions and trillions of dollars, uh-huh. weeks at a time, and that in turn, you know, um, creates debt that everybody else uh, that's under, you know, forty pretty much is going to suffer for for generations to come. Um, all that debt, you know, is, is basically going to come out of our taxes. It's going to be increased taxes and shit like that, and then future generations are going to hate us. You, if you thought we hated baby boomers for holding on to all these duplexes and houses, they're going to hate us uh, and our parents, you know, for the shit that we let happen on our watch. Um, so, I mean, in the short term, 
uh, our taxes are going to pay for it next year, but in the long term, with all this debt on the country, um, children and grandchildren, they're the ones that are really going to be paying for it. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, um, what would what, what you saying again? No, I was just saying, like, um, kind of lost. We're the ones that's paying for this fucking stimulus check. It's a loan. It's an advance. It's a payday loan. It's a payday loan. The government oh, that's gave everybody that's one big ass fucking payday loan. Shit. That's what I wanted to talk about. So, everybody getting this pay loan. So, what's your <laughs> it's payday what, loan? It's a payday loan. <laughs> I used to be a fucking what's your, deep, knee deep in payday loans. What's your take on people? Shout out to Nick's check catching. What's your take on people saying that? Um, if we can afford this, we can afford um, reparations for black people. What's your take on that? Oh, yeah. Reparations are long overdue. Um, but what's your take on them um, comparing the two, saying that if we got money for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Package, it makes no fucking sense. How can you fucking flip a switch when you make $6 trillion literally fall out of the sky? We did not create $6 trillion of value that we sold to other countries. But like you said, they, they fucked out a machine. They got a money printer. They don't give a fuck about us. If they did, they would have printed us our little 17... 16, 15, 20 trillion went about their business and the world would have adjusted. Yeah, we might crash the stock market when it happens. Who gives a fuck, you know? Give us what you owe us and we'll leave you the fuck alone. Hell, I'm willing to start a whole new country. As long as we get a few of those nukes that our brothers in arms in the military, you know. They're not giving us that, though. Yeah. They're not giving us they, that. Come on. They definitely don't want black people to have their own nuclear program because uh, that's when they'll start taking it serious. Like if. If I quote unquote created a nuclear program in a sovereign nation or something like that, oh hypothetically God. speaking, of course, um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure every nation state would be wanting to bomb the fuck out of us. But you know, what I'm saying because you know, uh, black people across the um, di- diaspora in the globe as a whole, you know, don't have we're not on coal. You know, what I'm saying, believe. yeah, um, we have not gotten to that that state where you know we're pretty, you know, well protected and don't have to um basically bow down to uh the, the the military forces and shit of white supremacy. Sorry I have to put on my Dr. Umar Johnson hat for a second. So um since you bring it up, um the, since all this going on, they has this woken um black people up and letting them know that they're not prepared for what's um going on that's what's gonna partake in the future? No, I mean a lot of people like to throw buzzwords like AI, automation, this, that, and the problem is to begin with is that you know black people don't have any true economic code. So uh-huh. a lot of us that weren't already producing, we're feeling the effects of this way more. You know, people that was hustling and had a lot of you know streams of income, whether online, offline, whatever, um, different businesses, uh, assets, whatever, you know, residuals. People that had atypical ways to get a buddy, they're not feeling it as much unless they're just fucked up with their money, you know, just high earners that waste their money. But for the most part, you know, people that get money in, you know, a variety of ways, they're not feeling it the way that, you know, a lot of the people in our community at a pill day job just get laid off, stuff like that. So a lot of us are just behind to begin with and fucked up. So hold up. What what you think about um now that now that we have this, um, when this all if it ever clears up, um, are you going to and be, it will? Are you are you going to um like basically become like a doomsday prepper? You want to call it or like a some type some type? Because I think I am like after this um this shit clears up, I really got to get my shit together and um I got to start stocking and like we know we go to the gun range and shit a lot. But yeah, see see and, that's the problem. That's that right there. Now that something's happened, black people too reactive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Long story short, we're too reactive as a whole. I'm not going to say that there's not a sizable amount of us that are already prepared and already have the mindset, because there are a lot of motherfuckers that's already on code amongst us. But the ruling majority, without even looking up a stat or something or even taking a study, I can con- I say with confidence, you know, a lot of us, you know, we're too reactive and we're not prepared, you know, for these kind of calamities. And we're waiting for basically... White society to tell us, you know, what's next. Are we not financially prepared or economically prepared? I mean, or is it mentally, physically? Is it uh, militant from, as far as a militant mindset? Because, you know, I come from a militant um, mindset background, like my family and everything. We more yeah. militant. So, like... It's a lot of coonery, you know. At the root of coonery, it's... it's it's about depending on white society and looking to, you know, the the system, you know, the one that is oppressive to begin with, 
to um, solve all your problems, basically. You're looking for solutions. That's what a coon is. A coon is basically somebody that's looking to white society for the majority of their solutions and, you know, ultimately depends on that system to... And that uh, believes in that system. To thrive and sustain. That, and that believes in that system. Exactly, you know. They pledge allegiance to that sort of system that um, never had their interests at heart. Um, but anyways... Um, a lot of us, you know, coon for jobs, you know what I'm saying? Not necessarily compromise ourselves, but put ourselves, you know, in environments, you know, that aren't best conducive, you know, to our growth as black people and, you know, as black adults in America. You know, a lot of us sell pe small pieces of ourselves for different amounts of, you know, salaries, um, paychecks, commissions, even, you know, like how they say um, the NFL, NBA, we're like plantations, you know what I'm saying? There's always the cost, you know what I'm saying, as... Do you believe in that though? Because a lot of people will, will combat and say that they're making hundreds of millions of dollars. How can you call that a plantation when uh, slaves they didn't get paid money and yada 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 this and that? Well, it's more indentured servitude. You know, it's like a contract, it's something you're agreeing to, but the terms and it's 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 more about the lack of leverage that you have in the situation. You know what I'm saying? And the amount of exploitation. That's why it will be you know, sort of compared or you know, kind of brought up to be similar to um, slavery and stuff. But, I mean, the athletes definitely get create incredible opportunities they probably wouldn't get otherwise in the corporate. It's, it's kind of like, like, like a partnership, but it's unequal terms. It, it literally is a partnership. It's literally a partnership between you and your organization and, the, I, and, you know, the sport, you know, governing body as a whole. But, you know what I'm saying, I feel like, as somebody that's not an athlete, there's more of like a passive fan and a former, you know, whatever, athlete, whatever, but... Looking at, you know, these institutions, it's I see it from business mindset. I see it as like a partnership that's unequal, basically. It's like un, it's an unequal partnership because you can't knock it all the way. The, the kind of impact that it makes for, uh, you know, the employees, the players, whatever, everybody, you know, the world as a whole, um, you can't knock that. But it's more it's about the on. It's financial slavery. It's not literal, you know, chattel slavery, but it's literally financial. Yeah, go. There it's you go. There financial you go. slavery there you go. and financial bondage. That's what it because is. Because I look at it like this. I say, okay, if you get this, it's a lack of leverage. If you get this motherfucker one hundred and thirty-five million dollars, how much is you making off this man? <laughs> what is he saying? really worth? Yeah, what is he really worth? You know what I'm saying? To be profitable at one hundred and thirty-five million, how profitable are you really? Exactly. Or you know what I'm saying? Are you are you are you a thirty five to a hundred and thirty five million to a billion? Are you a hundred and thirty five million to a five hundred million? Mm -hmm. You know? What's what's the real that that that's my thing and like and I think they look at it as far as like, oh mother you basically to be honest, to quite frank, you nigger, yeah. Um I'm giving you you came you from a, a poor neighborhood and I'm giving you this fucking lifestyle, so fuck he, you, nigger. Here's a whole bag of biscuits. Yeah. Um, you take these butter biscuits. Actually, here's a truckload full of biscuits. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got a biscuit factory. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's Tim more where you came from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Tim more where you came nigger. from. You're expendable, nigger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're just the one that's most marketable. Mm -mm -mm. It, it, it was never about you. You know what I'm saying? But they, they do these players like this all the time. Look what's going on with Cam Newton and all these other players. Yeah, it's some hoe ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Speaking from the street mindset, I was it's some hoe ass shit to enter in that type of business deal or that partnership where you know what I'm saying you're being literally um, fucked, but you're winning at the same time. It's not bad, but it's it's a it, it's a bad way to go out. I was saying. That's we, all I'm we saying. We talking about Cam. No, I'm saying like just the whole NFL. I'm, I'm saying not NFL, but I'm saying the whole athlete, like the whole the whole black professional athlete route from a financial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, since we talking about that, what's your take on um, black athletes not going to um, HBH? What is it called? HBCUs. Uh, HBCUs. Well, HBCUs are worthless to begin with. You know, these... I'm talking about as far as the athletes going to and making the school like a, um, oh, a number one contender. I feel like they're doing a, that's called community service. Explain. Well, these HBCUs, as I previously just said, they're worthless to begin with. The the actual purpose that they tote themselves around to 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 be for and do really doesn't end up being the uh, the net result. You know, they they produce a lot of these bougie, these bourgeoisie, these boule, oh, oh black, light skin, oh, oh, shit. Uh, oh, shit. dark skin, everything <laughs> skin, fair skin. You know. Um, I found out I was black 10 years ago, shea butter, you know, the same shit they say online. I'm not trying to re 
regurgitate buzzwords, but it's the best way to put these people. But it creates a lot of those echo chambers, I'll say, <laughs> with you know this this shea butter coonery and all this this digital you know um, servitude to that movement. But um, <laughs> HBCUs to begin with, I mean, they're a great concept, but so the problem is they're about entertainment. That's that BET crowd, that Tom Joyner, that <laughs> that that Roland Martin, that Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> yeah, all that shit. That, like, all they want to do is parties. Like they never about empowerment. Like okay, it's like all right, cool. Like you know what I'm saying? Like me, I'm a radical dude, but you know, at the same time in my private life, as well being as, as being you know this you know this militant radical black person. I love to be a fucking ratchet, turn up, do whatever. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the same time I'm being about course. empowerment. The people but, know that. You know what I'm saying? So I'll mingle, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not knocking them. Do what you want. I don't care. You can be as bougie and uppity as you want. I'm about empowerment, but I can come together on certain things. One of those things is partying. So you know what I'm saying? Function and shit like that. No matter, I fuck to all black people regardless. Ideology, beliefs aside, I'm all about the turn up. I'm a ratchet first at heart. <laughs> I'm a ratchet at heart. I'm a ratchet at heart. <laughs> but <laughs> this guy. I'm about empowerment. So at the end of the day. Bad. I'm about, about to fucking, like, even if I see people at, like, fucking, like, grits and biscuits and funks uh, and shit again, you know, people, hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Socialize me, people, like, I'm not about that. Like, if if you're not we trying to build. Fun, bro. We just having fun. We just regular people, man. We just Yeah, fun. I'm just saying, I, I, I went off on a tangent, but I'm just saying, like, could you, could, could you ask me about it? <laughs> yeah. Here, take this weed for me, man. I'm, take this weed for me. Take this weed for me. I don't fuck with all that. I'm about, about empowerment, about building. Okay, what's your take? That's on the it? problem. See, back to what I was saying. All I want to do is, you know, party and look good on camera, have great headshots for LinkedIn, be professional, you know, be, be, you know, be these corporate coons, you know, be these industry people, walk that image, you know, you know, emulate certain people in the industry, you know what I'm saying, and not even really setting out to innovate. You know what I'm saying, I feel like a lot of people follow a, bl a blueprint. Especially, in of course, circles. of course, of course. But when it's time to build, it's it's quiet. You know what I'm saying? They want to keep to themselves. They're not trying to build or create, you know, um, resources for everybody. You know, they hoard. They're all about themselves and their family. Yeah, that's just because the battery. That doesn't matter uh, on the camera. It's just to be recording. Let me double check. I'll be right back. Yeah, what he said is true, though. You know, doesn't matter. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we watching? We got one person see? watching. One lovely person at home. Shout out to whoever's watching on Instagram. I forgot to see. <laughs> I still love you. You're something else. We love you, dear. Thank you for hanging on. <laughs> Be a... Oh, yeah. I want to talk about something I've been talk... that I've been debating for a long time. This whole what? DMT thing. Remember? Oh, DMT. 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 Oh, let's talk DMT, about it. Let's talk about it. Let's DMT, talk about it. DMT, DMT. I want to fucking do that shit so bad. Yeah. So, remember... My person I was telling you about was about to set it up. It fell through. Whatever. I want to do it, though, through the vape cartridge. I feel like that would be, you know, a good way to take the three hits, you know. Uh -huh. Take the three hits, and then, you know, then whoosh, take off. I'm all about that DMT life, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to go from zero to a thousand. You're not. I've never done, done any psychedelics yet. ever before, but I'm going straight for the DMT. I've done the research. You know, I want that molecule, you know. I'm, I'm ready for that spirit molecule. That's all I'm going to say. I'm all about that spirit molecule life. Yeah, I, I want, I'm down to do it, you know. I mean, to me, I feel like I already half fast experience, as we know. Cause from I'm all about that psychedelic life. Yeah. Astro projection for me. Excuse me. Astro projection and um, lucid dreaming. So, I think I can handle it. Yeah. You know, I experienced me. I, I could be another episode for that. We ain't got to talk about that right now. But, yeah. DMT, bro. What else you got? What, what else you want to talk about? Man, let's see. Oh yeah, um, we need to do our uh, our our food blog. Shout out to anybody out there with any restaurants that want us to come by Pelican Privacy. You know, we're ready to do some food vlogging. We'll come review. We'll do some work. Let's work. Shout out to you. We love to eat. We got those good reviews coming for you. Pelican Privacy eats coming to a, a food truck near you since we're on quarantine life. But yeah, we'd like to start doing our uh, our food vlogging. What type of foods you fuck with? You know, I fuck with crib barbecue off top. That's what I wanted to say. That's what it was. Duh, it just came back to me. First <laughs> thing, because when you were talking about gins, always the weed. <laughs> I take, I take a, I, I go off course, but I always come back. <laughs> I always come back. So I love the fucking shit. But um, 
First place I'm going to is Korean barbecue. I'm going to Stone Grill, Korean barbecue, going to Koreatown. Shout out to Stone Grill. Um, I can tell you guys where I'm just saying. Nice little Stone Grill joint that I go to. I don't like blowing up the spot, you know. Yeah. We can't blow up our spot. But yeah, Korean barbecue, that's the first, that's the first thing I'm going to when shit open back up. That's the first I'm literally, that's the first man. I've like I've been, I'm I'm fucking, I'm horny for Korean barbecue. Yeah, it's been how long has it been, bro? Like what, a month already? Everything been shut down? I've lost track of time at this point. Every day's the really? same. Every day is the same. Every day is the same. Sucks. It's like Groundhog Day, that movie with Bill Murray. It's like every day. Ray, that's that's what it feels you. like. It feels like Groundhog Day. Yeah, well, it's uh, crazy. Man, I really want some of that. I'm just so fucking fed up. I just can't wait for this shit to end. How you think? How you think the party life is gonna be if this shit ever ends? How you think like the clubs and everything gonna be? I think it's gonna be fucking crazy. Hey, hey, hey! What if it doesn't end? What if they use this to enforce um, martial martial law? law? Yeah. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. I got... Hey, I'm ready. You ready? Uh-huh. No, okay. Are you? Yeah, mostly. You got your shit? I got a list. Got your shit? I got to take a few more items on the list. I'll be ready, but yeah. How much toilet did you purchase? It's totally possible, but I try not to entertain chaos, even though I love, you know, you know, anarchy just as much as the next, you know, sadistic genius. Um, but I'm really about um, just building right now. Like, right now, I feel like everybody's reset. Now's a good time, really. Um... Find a, a skill, whatever, service, something you can turn into a business or find something you can flip or something you can make yourself and sell and get popping right now. Now's the time. Everybody's about to fucking about to fucking go ham with the credit cards as soon as everybody can hit the streets. We're like little mice about to be released from the cage. Once they let the cage open and it's like, we're like the maze, all the mice are going, that's what it's going to be like. Right now we stuck in the cage. For Cause I, part. I'm going. I'm going. I know for a fact we gonna go in, bro. Like oh, yeah. when this shit clear up, if ever do. No, we're gonna start going to the clubs with our camera crew. Yeah, I mean, like it's been like I'm a not month. even about to ask. I'm about to just pull up. I'm just like this shit is crazy. Like this when is this my shit life. Ain't... Like <laughs> I'm not hiding anything. Like, this is what we do out here. We out here working. But yeah. I just can't. Fuck I can't it. wait to go back and function again. But you know, this has been good though, cause like at thirty, I've done all that. You know what I'm saying? I've been to all the clubs, kickbacks, all that type uh, of shit. Here we go with this shit. You've been to a few sex parties, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> most people can't say that. Most people can't say that. A lot of people yeah. been in some tricky situations <laughs> and some unfortunate situations, but a few people have been to some real sex parties. You know what I'm saying? Some real legit ones where everybody, you know, respects no, everybody. I didn't did that. I'm yet. talking about respectful sex parties. You know, what I'm saying? and I never participated. Honest to God, I never shit. participated. I was more of a voyeur. You know, I was Caleb the voyeur. A voyeur. I was a voyeur. Oh, a voyeur. <laughs> I was a voyeur. This nigga. I had thoughts. On, you know, I had but in affirmations. But you know, I can never confirm or deny. Uh, but I definitely was a voyeur in those situations. But you know, what I'm saying, anyways. What about Norwalk? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this dude, is, this dude is liquidating all his assets on air. That's all I'm going to say, people. <laughs> I'm speaking cold, but think of a business. He's liquidating. Every, everything's on sale. This guy's telling it. Oh, people. I don't know what this man is talking about. I don't know. No such thing. This man is running down the street naked. He's telling it all. Pause. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's my best friend, though, man. I'm stuck with him. I'm I guess we'll him. leave that one up. <laughs> that was... Yeah, that was a good. Um, yeah, that was, yeah. I don't know anything about Norwalk, bro. I can tell you about Compton. I can tell you about the baddest bitch in Compton. <laughs> oh no, we don't want to go. I don't want to go there. Remember I used to say that back in 2012 was going yeah, to cut the Empire. That suck. girl was ugly. She had a basket weave too. It was sad. Really? Yeah, I was on her. But What's see, a basket weave? Oh, a basket weave is a hair hat. When you know those girls, it be oh, kind of stiff, and you know, you know. Men don't spend, like, I'm going to say this. Men don't spend too much time about the details of your hair. That's for people that's really into hair and those type of males. But, you know, men, um, we notice when your hair looks effed up. So we know what, like, the stiff weave is and stuff and the wigs, you know, have, like, the split ends in the middle. You have a sick part where the part is, like, frizzy all right here. Like, we notice that. Like, we know good hair and what's bad hair because that's part of what we like about a woman, how she keep herself up her hair and all that. But, yeah. A hair hat, or you know what oh, a basket weave is one of those ones where it's not really a wig, but it's like hair that's been on so long that it looks like it's never going to come off. But it's clearly fake. The girls that have these Does it move? Does it go... It doesn't move. Well, they move their hair. It go like this. See this hat? 
The way my head is going. It does that. It like yeah, that. yeah. This is what it goes like. I'm going to show you people at home. This is what it goes like. <laughs> this nigga crazy. I'm going to ruffle <laughs> on my fitted cap. <laughs> yeah. It's not a fitted cap, you asshole. It's a fucking the hair. It just stays on. Ass. It stays on. But yeah, we notice that type of shit. I don't fuck with you hair hat bitches. You a lie. No, I never had a girl with a stiff weave. You a lie. Never. You never. You lie. have. I've never in my I life fucked with a stiff weave bitch. I got standards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking for myself here. No, no. Speaking for myself. Oh, he lying. I'm just, I'm just. Yeah. Uh, no, I, you know, I've made love to a butterball before. I'm be talking about, we talking about um stiffies. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, like. I met a few girls with weave stiffies that gave me Oh, yeah, we're talking about weave, not uh, size of the woman. Yeah. Oh, Shout out to I, the I thick fuck, girls. I fuck with all types of women. Man. But yeah, hair. Um, yeah. That's why it's best. If, like, in my criteria, I typically go for girls who have good hair, so I don't care if she gets a weave, because I know underneath What's hair, good hair? Curly. What's good know, hair? Th- whatever they say, 3C, whatever the fuck. I don't know. What's good hair? Good hair is that wet shit. You know, they come out the shower, and it's curly, it's wavy. Cool alert. Cool alert. Cool alert. It's kinky. Cool it's kinky. Cool it's kinky. It's cool alert. nappy. Cool alert. It's kinky. It's cool nappy. Alert. It's kinky, and it's nappy. <laughs> Talking about that Ethiopian hair. That, that, that's good hair. The, the, like the girls from Ethiopia. <laughs> He only said because nah, you know, I, he, he only said, said, yeah. he only said because I you know shout I out, love shout Ethiopian. out to the East Indian girls. Oh, you know he what? Hey, no, I love fun, Ethiopian fun, fun, girls. Fun fact: I used to think that uh, <laughs> fun fact that you know the, the word H A B E S H O. I thought it was to say Habisha. It's something else. It's Habesha or something else. I was saying it right. it's not Habisha. What is that? A Ethiopian name? It's huh? Habisha. Habisha. That's Habisha. What it's Thank you. Thank you, Habisha. I've been saying around for all of the. I've been going around like, oh my god, I want a Habisha girl, Habisha girl, Habisha girl, like East African, basically. You know, I fucking love East African Sudanese, women. Oh my god, Eritrean, Mm-mm. Ethiopian. Oh, I had this girl from um, where was she from? She was from um, she was from Morocco. I think I think no, she, I, I, she she was from North Africa when I was in Palo Alto. In Morocco is I, I think in Palo Alto. I had a girl from Morocco. Northwest she was Africa. French and Moroccan. Man, Moroccan, I think is like what's yeah. like. She was a babysitter. She was an au pair. Yeah, I met her in the clubs out there in this little club I used to go to by Stanford. Uh uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, what 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 transpired? I, I missed her. Uh, a kiss, a kiss. She she let me on, but you didn't nibble on that punani. Uh, no, I I nibbled on her tonsils. That was it. Oh. Yeah, it was weak. Oh. It was weak. I barely went to first base. I'm trash. But um, I did have a one night stand with a girl from the Himalayas. Speak on it. Oh yeah. No wait. Where was she from? Fiji. Fiji. Remember Fiji? Oh, talk about, talk about, talk about, talk about. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you about, 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 about Fiji. About, Fiji, Fiji, Fiji. Fiji was good. Fiji, um, I met her at the at the same bar right by Stanford. Um, I forgot the name of it. Uh, the old pro. The old pro. Uh-huh. Oh. Was it the old pro? It's one of those. I think it was the old pro. I used to go to and follow Alto. Um, anyways. I used to go out there. Um one night, you know, this is when I was doing my startup. I was working on Glass. I had my iOS app I was doing out there. I left, you know, my family behind. I went off on this great adventure to be this startup tech black, you know, this this success, you know, this <laughs> this, this this pad, you know, this, this sure thing. Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley, you know, all that. Yeah, yeah I actually did that, you know. Okay. I, I went through the motion of them. Anyways, I was still functioning. Like I said, I'm a wretched at heart. So um, I was up there. I was fucking it up, man. You know, I was, you know... And then, you know, I went on all the right nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> you know, I was taking a measly little punk ass salary at the time. You know, that's another story. We're talking about that another time. How I got fucked in Silicon Valley. That's going to be a great episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, about say, that, say that. I'm going to save that one. Say that's, that story. Yeah, that's the gold right there. Barely anybody knows about that one. But anyways, I used to be out there functioning heavy, you know. I'm saying, you know, have my clothes out there. Some of my clothes are out there. Some of my clothes are down here, back at home in Inglewood. Um, um, but anyways, I was up there. Um... One night, um, I was functioning, party, <laughs> clubbing, drinking, drinking Long Island iced teas. My favorite go-to drink. Um, cheap, easy to order, easy to remember. F- f- find a drink, stick to it, you know. I did that whole thing after I was 21. I stuck with Long Island iced tea. Off these Long Islands. Uh-huh. Um, I'm in there dancing and then, you know, partying, you know, doing what I do. Fucking it up, two-stepping, doing what I typically do. Dancing with girls, you know what I'm saying? Bumping and grinding, all that good stuff. Get to the point, nigga. I'm getting to it. You know, this girl come up to me and we dancing, you know, we get to it. And, you know, you know, I'm up here, so it's a little different, you know what I'm saying? Usually at black clubs, we don't go off and start kissing with people, you know, making out and all that. You know, like, 
black bars and shit like that. But up there, you know what I'm saying? It's hookup culture, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm looking to hook up with somebody. I've been up there for a couple of months. I ain't had sex with no bitch. I get numbers. How long has it been? Oh, at this point, it probably been like three, four months. I was up there for three, four God months. God damn, you haven't had sex for three, four three, months? Three, four months. Damn, this is jacking his dick off for a long time. No, 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 no. One thing I'll say, I never jack off. I haven't done that since I was like 14. Wait, what? Yeah, I've given up. I've That's low. What That's beneath the me. fuck? Masturbation is beneath me. I so swear to God, I put, that on, I, put, I, put my, I put that on my kids. I put that on everything. You ain't got to do all I don't that. Know, I'm just saying. Like, but, that, that's how adamant I am about non-masturbation. I feel like it's it's worthless. I'm all about the real thing. That's all. I'm patient. I'm a patient person. I, you ain't I, never made a Fifi, nigga? I never made a Fifi. I mean, I rubbed up against a <laughs> pillow. I was like, who has it? That's not a Fifi, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a, <laughs> a fufu. <laughs> it's a fufu. <laughs> no. It's a fufu. No. You rub up against a pillow. But anyways, um, he don't know what a Fifi is. I, ain't gonna I know say. what a Fifi bag is. Come on, man. what's a Fifi bag? No, it's, it's, what is it? It's it's, it's a it's a prison pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. I'm not stupid. Do you know holidays, boy? Yeah, yeah let's go ahead. <laughs> Tell them holidays. Hey. Count. Hey. What's it called? CJH, baby. Shout out to East Lake, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. 2004. to... Two thousand and four. Yeah. Ah, 2007. Yeah, no, 8. I was, was 8. Yeah, Four, I was, oh, 8. Yeah, I was definitely playing video games. Stole my wallet. I was definitely playing video games back then. I don't know what the fuck you were up to, dude. But I, I was in the house. I was in the house living a good life. I was, being I was underneath life. the fan, eating snacks from the store, playing video games. You was out there gangbanging. Uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> no, I'm saying he was pressing the line. That's all I'm saying. He was pressing the line. Press some lines, he nigga. A, he was a bitch or line presser. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was known as. A bitch or line presser. <laughs> Mr. Press the line. That's how you need to know. Mr. Press the line. He was a game banger. Shout out to them feds. Burnt out. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Why are you so burnt out, man? Don't be like that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, dating was easy back in middle school. All you have to do is go up. And finger bang. We just rubbing up against a girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's hi, I like you. Hump her. <laughs> Smack her ass. That's what, oh, that's what you did? Hey, you better be careful. <laughs> I'm going to be like, me too. Nah, better nah, watch nah, out. nah, nah. Hey, there's a lot of me too cases in, in back in middle school. Niggas was horny as fuck. <laughs> I was good. I was not doing any of that. <laughs> this nigga backpedal like a man. <laughs> <laughs> any of that there's no document of there's no document records of that anywhere we didn't have cell phones back then I was short yeah. I was four, I was like 4'8 I was the shortest nigga in middle school nobody I was I mean these girls wasn't fucking with me I would have to I, I would have to been a pervert to get some action cause I was scared I didn't know I didn't even start talking to, uh, to, to bitches I was like fucking um like eighteen, like like walking when you, up. Talking. When you start, when you, I'm talking to girls online on AIM and getting pussy capping or whatever. Oh, let's talk about that. Like, yeah, go I like was so, capping, but I was I was a digital cap. I'm a I'm a keyboard assassin. Is that right? Yeah, I'm a digital pimp. <laughs> that's how that's how. What I used was to your get first it. piece of pussy? First piece of pussy was a pocket pussy. No, it's the first piece of pussy was an Asian. I got she recruited me actually. Saki, Saki, yeah, Saki. I remember uh, high yeah, school. Yeah, Mue. Her name was M Y U E on on MySpace. Mue, a little Mue. But yeah, um, we all look her up. Saki, uh, she recruited me. I was eighteen. Your phone died. Yeah, it died. I don't care. Um, you still alive? But um, it's more about the audio, man. Um, yeah. Saki was good to me. You know, uh, she met up with me and she took me next to First AME Church. And it, uh, in in the West Adams district, you know, we was next to the church. Uh, she was scared that first night, and then uh, we we made out. And then the next night, this nigga said we made out. She came back. She said, "Okay, horny version." I'm at school. I'm it's, at Manual Arts. I'm at Manual Arts. Oh, it's not dead. Yeah, it's not dead. You liar. Pants on fire. Yeah. No, it, it stopped. It probably stopped, but uh, still got you know the audio and everything. But anyways. Um, she comes back the next day because I'm at school the day after, you know, I met up with her, we, we meet up, um, we make out, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And she's, and then she, she's calling me out. I'm at, I'm at like English class and I'm texting her on my sidekick and she's like, yeah, like, um, why were you so scared last night? I'm like, oh no, just wait. Oh yeah, come back, come back, come back tonight, come back tonight. And she came back, um, I think the night or the, or the next night. And then we went next to the church. Yeah, we was next to the first day of me, next to the first day of me. And then, you know, she gave it up. She gave me everything. But I was a trick from the start because she just threw her monkey in my face and I just licked it. I didn't know what to do. I just started yeah. licking it. I went out bad. 
Well, but it was a, clean. He was, it was a virgin. You was a virgin at the time. Yeah, I was a virgin. It was just, this is you know. This nigga was a simp, y'all. I was a mega simp. That was you, my first piece of pussy. That was my first piece of pussy. I mean, I got finger bang action and shit since I was five years old. I've been, you know. Since, God damn. Yeah, man. I was like brought on. Are we going? You want to go there? Yeah, we can go it there. It happened. To... No, no. I'm just saying. It was a girl. This girl. She turned me out. She uh, this well, two things happened. I was living. Well, my mom. Was staying in Culver City, and then this neighbor, this girl, this little white girl, she she took my hand and she put it down her pants. I don't know what to do. I was like, oh shit, I got scared and I pulled my hand back out and I ran off. I don't know what to think of. Like me. a bitch. No, I was like, Ugh. <laughs> I do better. You sound like penis. <laughs> fuck you. That's what I thought you had. Huh? Notice the person that came to your mind. <laughs> Whoever smelt it dealt it. This guy's a fact. <laughs> We got hey, a, hey, 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 watch your language. We got the rainbow sergeant to my left. <laughs> watch your language. Watch your language. We got a rainbow flag at 9 o'clock. <laughs> watch your language. 9 o'clock, we got it. A... <laughs> Anyways, but yeah. Um, second incident, uh, pre-K, I was at Head Start in Gardena at this Catholic church somewhere. <laughs> this girl, she made a fort and she pulled me in. She had this real sloppy mouth. Her name was Andrea. She always had like this real sloppy. These are my me too stories. Uh, oh, we, I, yeah, this I, is my me too story. I got this one for you. I'm gonna let you go. Let you go, 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 go. She go. pulled me into her little fort. Remember those puzzle hey, piece cousin. blocks? The ones that were like red, blue, orange. You can make like little things. She built like the sick little fort, and she pulled me in there, and then she kissed me, and then um, I like that shit. And then that was the last time I kissed a girl for like 15 years, I think, because I was, you know, I was. Going out bad, that's all I was saying, until I got my game, you know, until I got this gamed up, you know, version of me now, you know, I'm good, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm, I'm on some better living right now, you know what I'm saying? Getting it out, you know, whatever way. But, um, yeah, back then, I was I was horrible. I was a beta male simp, man. But when the internet came out and the sidekicks, I was on. I was like, oh, yeah, aim, chat room, ASL, baby. I was typing the chat rooms. I was typing in Los Angeles group chat on the sidekick or on the computer. I got archives. I still got all these archives from from aim too. I got my aim logs. I'm sick. I'm a very sick person. But anyways, um, <laughs> I was a digital uh, <laughs> Relax, assassin, buddy. man. Relax, buddy. But yeah, man. Me too, man. Shout out to all the to all the male victims, man. These girls, you know, they fucking took advantage of me. <laughs> I'm not mad about that. It made me a better man. No, I've been molested by one of my female cousins when I was little. She knows she is. Oh man, but, you, you you didn't have to sell the the that. That's the one that's supposed to go in your book, man. You have to say that one for the book. It's all good, though. Hope you got a better story but, than that for your biography. Autobiography. <laughs> that's where everybody doesn't retire. Should I explain the story? No. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> no, I mean... I don't think that's funny. It's yeah, I mean, funny. I don't want to really get too activist right now, even though we some activists. Uh, no, nah, uh, we just talking. You know, I forgot. Host. Oh, we're podcasting right now. I forgot. Yeah, you know, it's not like a regular conversation. Oh, it's always a regular conversation. That's the thing. It's public privacy. It's about transparency, truth. You know, you know what public privacy is. Oh. Do you remember what the guy said? They, 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 they gonna say. They gonna say that explains everything. <laughs> yeah. Watch this. That's what they gonna say about me. That explains everything. We had twenty five viewers. Shout out to everybody that tuned in. Oh, I got Go it. back live. I got it. I got it. Who 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 always so? We'll look at that later. We about to go back live right now. Hold on. Go back live. Go live. It don't matter. But yeah, Um, I'm glad they didn't hear that. (laughs) It's none of their business. It's none of your business. This ain't none of your business. None of your business, bitch. What's up with your boy, um, Young Chop? I don't even follow the media like that. I knew I I knew he was gonna say that. I don't even follow the media like that. I need to say that. See, I actually that media training, even though I've been in the industry, <laughs> I, I know better than certain training. things because I'm just intelligent, what unlike most fuck? people. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Hold on, let me fix the camera. But yeah, anyways, this guy's fucking. I have media training, so it doesn't even matter. I'm not gonna um, answer about anybody in the media. Um, next topic. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I saw that nigga. He was uh, trying to go for this girl called Suki Han that I follow on Twitter. She's on Love and Hip Hop or some shit. But anyways, um. This nigga was, was fucking in her DMs and shit and basically talking about, I don't give a fuck. Like, I pay for your OnlyFans. He started saying, like, yeah, I pay for, for pussy from these OnlyFans hoes and shit. He basically said, that's what a lot of these, these fucking rappers do. They're the ones paying for these Instagram honeys and shit. 
financing. Let's talk this about shit. that. I want to say like, yeah, I'm so sick of these. They financing these hoes. I'm so sick of these niggas, man. And the game has changed drastically. Yeah, the game. Like is... a nigga, like nowadays, it be a basic bitch, and she like she expect the most from a nigga. Like she got her titties done, ass done, titties done. Everything. She's like, oh, I'm the shit. You owe me money for looking at me for because, a, for wanting to but be with it's, me. It's the thirst. Pay me. It's the simp. I'm about my money. But it's the simp culture, though. I call it the simp culture. Yeah. It's a lot of niggas out here simping, bro. Prostitution. Like, it's sex work, bro. It's y'all all know who y'all are. Y'all know who y'all are. Simps fuel sex work. Simps fuel sex work. It's about niggas that have, don't have the time to learn game. So what they rather do is pay the price of admission for guaranteed pussy, and that's what birth sex work. Niggas say, ah, I don't want to be a caveman and go hunt and go find a bitch. I'm going to slug the bitch over her head. It's the same thing. The same... They evolved from the same caveman that was fucking... Sims evolved from caveman that was fucking slugging bitches over the head that didn't want to fucking earn a bitch. Same sort of mentality. Oh, no. They earned the bitch, definitely. They earned the bitch. Yeah. Just financially. Financially, Financially, yeah. but a lot of these guys don't understand that. Like, I think a lot of dudes, they do, they do understand that they're being used for their coins, but I guess they just coins. don't give a fuck. Cause that's the, you know quote unquote coin that's people use and shit yes. the bag and that all that nigger talk. That's because a guy. But, the, if you pay for pussy, that means that you value pussy more than you value your work that you used to get the money for the pussy. That's all that it means. And like all they doing is fueling like, and I be seeing like I see the posts like we know people that we uh, that um uh, that follow us and we follow them like on Instagram like these dudes just like just be straight cupcaking like a motherfucker and you can see the difference between like like. A motherfucker like complimenting you and a motherfucker like true being story. an ass kiss. True you know story. what I'm saying? Oh, definitely a true story. <laughs> <laughs> true story. I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm just talking about just in general. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. I, I never speak in general. I speak in specifics. I don't. I can't. I just speak in general. Are you already trying to confuse people? No, no, you just, no. You just I'm speaking just speaking airy language. You just put the words out of thin air. Yes. Expedition. Indubitably, my expedition. Expedition. I got my navigator going to expedition. Expedition is This is exceedingly bad. Just talking big for no reason. That's usually the smart, dumbest nigga in the room using big words to make him, you know, make themselves. I'm not going to say him. To make themselves sound extra, extra, you know, on par. The English language. But anyways, um, what's going on with uh, car game? What's the hot new car on the streets right now? The, hot, the hottest car on the street? The hottest car on the streets right now. Shit, what just came out? Uh, like, I don't know. We need to get back to what matters, you know what I'm saying? Fast cars and fast life. What's the hottest whip out here? I guess the um the new or, Corvette or, the Corvette just came out. You looking at the Corvette? The Corvette is nice. Yeah, I'm still looking at that fucking eight series. I'm bougie, man. Oh yeah. I gotta get my eight series. I gotta get yeah. that eight series. Eight fifty i. That shit is beefy oh, as fuck, God. bro. They want one eighty, right? Man, that shit is a whole birthday cake. You can afford. He can afford that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 He can afford that. Okay. Okay. But I'm I'm being smart. I'm trying to get property first. I'm all about yeah. property. Oh, yeah. shit let's like talk that. about that. Let's talk yeah. about, let's talk about fucking fuck cars. It, yeah. Talk about the property. But let's talk about let's talk about everything value over values. Oh, I can let's get into that all that. day. I know all type of shit. You know that people should do, or it will be good in their best interest to do. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. Please seek out professional help for anything I say moving forward. But anyways, yeah. So the plan is so so. What's the plan moving forward? The plan like? moving forward is to acquire a business model that is not necessarily recession proof, but evergreen. You can always make some money off of it. That's why I said earlier. Black people need to start getting, you know, skilled trades and services and just, you know, consulting or doing whatever. Getting on with uh, making some money, putting that into some assets, a mix of different assets, or a different, you know, asset classes and shit. Property, hard, precious minerals, not no certificate, not no stock of a gold. Get actual physical gold. You can go to goldmoney.com and get some gold if you want some gold. Out. There's not no feeling hey, or nothing I, like t- that. Tell, pe- tell the people... um. The importance between buying fucking gold and silver versus fucking buying jewelry and like plain Jane's, because you know buying jewelry is well, cool only if you're plain Jane. Value. If you plain Jane yeah. it though, jewelry has value by itself because it is it's still like a precious mold. But the the form that it's in is basically 
it's it's just a, it's just a real small quantity because you know it's it's mixed in with all these other precious metals and stuff you know it, but it has enough gold to achieve the look darker the gold you know what i'm saying whatever but physical gold like gold bullions gold coins that's what you want yeah it has hard value so like that's a hard currency that's something you know that gold like its price is very stable it's a good store of value you have physical gold that's the best thing to have right now because gold will make sure you can always eat gold is something to always be exchanged gold right? never gold goes is down timeless, basically. Ne- it, all, it never goes down yeah. gold never so, goes I mean, down in value you definitely want to have some gold some gold you know, silver is good. Too. Investment property. Um, there's all kind of programs, you know, to get all that type of shit. Um, oh, my bad. Yeah, my jacket. I'm tripping. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm hot. This is what I do. I'm hot. I just do all type of shit. I don't even realize it'd be happening. I was uh, ruffling my feathers. But anyways, um, yeah. Um, so it's good to have a good mix of property, hard metals, um, real estate trust, REITs. That's something that pays dividends on, you know. Uh, these these things called trust units, you know, that invest in real estate, um, cryptocurrency. I only believe in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the best store of value. It's perfect, you know, digital currency. There's other coins out there, but for long term, Bitcoin is the one that's going to be the one. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, you got some um, investments in, in Bitcoin? Yeah, I got some Bitcoin on my cash app. I also okay. have a a wallet. And really, I'm, I'm breaking a cardinal sin. You're never really supposed to disclose to people. Like people that really take the security and privacy of cryptocurrency, uh, private. I mean, I mean, privacy seriously. The one of the um, staples or tenets is you never really tell people online or you disclose publicly. Rather, you know that you have cryptocurrency because that puts you at risk or people, you know, to make you a target. Um, I don't really give a fuck because I'm a computer security professional. I know how to protect my shit. But for that, for, for like the layman or the average person, you know, it's not good. For anybody getting into speak that, up on that, huh? <laughs> It's not good for you to speak yeah, on that. It's not good. Don't speak on it. If if you don't know how to protect a router or change, you know, real security settings and stuff on the computer and understand digital shit, just mind your business. business. Mind your business. Just don't even talk about it. Just keep it. But yeah, I suggest everybody get a hardware wallet. You know, if you don't actually have the wallet, you don't really own the coins. The like Coinbase and even Square Cash, they sell Bitcoin and all these other um, exchanges. They don't. Um, give you the keys that control your coins. They just give you an account and like you know whatever, just like your phone or uh-huh. anything else. So it's like it's like it's not it's not it's not artificial, but it's not tangential. Like you can't really take it with you, and you're dependent on them. So, anyways, uh-huh. get a hardware wallet, get some Bitcoin, um, have property, you know, have art. That's what a lot of people use, you know, to launder money. Art, you know, what I'm saying, go to au- auctions, wash money with art, do whatever you got to do with that, you know, invest, wash, however you got to get it. Um, what else? Um, this is like the ideal thing that I would do, you know, like I said, precious metals, let me see, cryptocurrency, gold, physical gold, gold, gold coins, gold bullions, get ounces, get gold bars, um, get properties, have LLCs, have LLCs that control, you know, all your properties and everything, and you own those LLCs, so it's like a pass-through to protect you from getting sued. Motherfuckers will sue you. You will get sued being a landlord. Somebody's going to try you eventually. You're going to have to go to court over something. Of you have to assume the worst. So I'm saying it's good to have that basic legal structure, you know, yep. talk to a business lawyer, a tax attorney, somebody, figure out the best legal structure for you, depending on what you're trying to do, whether it's a business, a nonprofit, whatever. But, you know, what I'm saying have, you know, uh, pass through entities and things, you know, that remove liability from you. But you still have the benefit of making money and owning business, own things through that. You know, what I'm saying have a living trust, have a will get a life insurance, just like all the other races and people do, you know, yo, making yo. money. Yeah. Well, which? That's like free money. Yo, yo, yo. That's free money. Take life insurance you know, policies out on everybody. I'm about that. I don't know. I understand why niggas ain't got life insurance, bro. I got mine. I'm good. My kids is go cheat. We go cheat. I don't even pay for my life insurance. Yeah. My fucking parents got my life insurance on me. Oh, so look at me. Yeah, I'm balling, baby. I'm swanky. So, <laughs> so if I die, ain't I'm no a car- trust fund, baby. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no car washes on my behalf, baby. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Ain't no go fund me on mine. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no go fund me Ain't no, no go fund me on, me on mine. Me, I'm good. We good out here. I'm good. We eating. Me? We eating. Yeah. Life insurance is cheap as fuck, though, That's too. like the best thing you can do for your family, though, for real. Life insurance. It's so... It's like... It's... Guaranteed money as long as you don't commit suicide. So uh, all you have to do is not fuck it up. That's all uh, you have to do is suicide not fuck it up. don't count. Yeah, nah, you're not getting the bag. You're For getting, real? Yeah, or anything that was staged or suicide, you're not getting the bag. What? Yeah, I, didn't yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. No, they're gonna press you, especially if, if they're gonna be on that coroner's <laughs> ass. They're gonna be on the coroner's <laughs> ass. I'm telling you. Yeah, because people are fraud. Uh, yeah, they're on it. 
What a suicide though. So if I if I fucking sign a paper saying, yeah, let's like, say you get life insurance and then two months later you commit suicide, or you you really commit suicide, but they found you dead, but they can't tell how you dead. Like, what if I said if I blast myself and it's obviously I committed suicide? Well, you, you think I get that bag up? You, you know, you ain't getting another <laughs> bag. You're, you know, go find me t shirt, car wash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh shit! Ghetto Paul Bears, all that. This is a ghetto Paul Bears. You know what I'm saying? That. Dicky suits. Hey, <laughs> you, you get a dicky suit funeral. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are they fucking giving out? Um, are they what? still doing funerals? Um, during this crisis? I don't know. Don't care. <laughs> you don't know. I don't care. As long as none of my loved ones die. Shout I'm out just, to my family. I'm just, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just, and friends and extended I'm just and associates. Asking. But nah, I um, I don't know. I I I live by a church. I think I saw a funeral. I live by Crenshaw Christian Center. I think I did see one. Oh, did you? Yeah. Anyways, um, what else is going on here? I mean, really, it's, it's life is kind of slowed down with this damn quarantine Look life, this, man. Bro. What is this? Don't say the name. Don't say the name. Yeah. Too close to home. Ah! Yeah, we can't talk about that on air. No, right I'm not talking about that on air. I'm just yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, that's funny as hell, yeah. That's always little things y'all never know about. <laughs> <laughs> it's called friends. I have friends. But anyways. Um, so they clock on the news. Uh, never mind. Uh, man, I, I was just... See, the fucked up part about this, I was just starting to like downtown LA, man. I was just really starting to find bars and like little pockets that I like. You know what I'm saying? I, you I have a flow at? downtown. The breweries, I'm saying everything. I'm just saying like... You're I'm talking gonna... because of the corona? Yeah, about... oh, man. Yeah, yeah, quarantine yeah. life, man. Quarantine This shit chill, fucking bro. sucks. We keep Tired, bringing it man. up, but like, man, this is the first episode. I miss bowling shit. I, I, I miss shit I never rarely did. Like, I, I miss bowling. All type of shit. I do, man. I miss going out, man. I miss fucking meeting. <laughs> yes, I'm having interviews. options. Just I miss, having, oh, I miss doing, doing interviews, Yeah, doing interviews, doing working. Fuck, man. I miss fucking working, We used to bleed the streets, man. We used to bleed the streets, man. I miss working, fucking having fun, fucking... Doing my little Mac up Romney thing, baby. I'm do this podcast and all this other goodies and yeah. all these skits and other, you know, you know what's coming and all kind of content. We can't tell you everything all at once. But yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just like, you know, I miss it. I know y'all miss us. You feel me? That's yeah. what we do in this podcast. We just got to innovate when we get back. You know what I'm saying? Get back to it. Stay on it. You know what I'm saying? We going to come harder than ever, y'all. We're going to come harder than ever, y'all. Ever. Y'all not even ready. <laughs> y'all ain't ready for us. We going to fuck the streets up, though.